Hello, my name is Ahmed Darwish. I am a PhD student at the University of Bristol Law School. And today I'm going to speak about investing in people. In this presentation, I'm trying to answer three main questions. First, what does invest in people mean? Second, why investing in people is so important? Third, how does my research contribute to the field? So, investing in people means, from my point of view, to provide people with good health care, quality education, and adequate training to develop skills needed to adapt and thrive amid digital disruption and other future challenges. Then why investing in people is so important? First of all, I can say that people have been proven to be the most precious asset on earth. By the beginning of the second half of the 20th century, economic schoolers have noticed an unexplained rise in earnings and national input compared to the limited increase in physical capital. According to Schultes, who was one of those scholars, he said that investments in human capital is probably the major explanation for this difference. According to the World Bank report of 2018, human capital accounts for the lion's share of a country's wealth. In fact, human capital represents 70% of wealth in high-income countries, which points out the significant role that human capital plays in such countries. Secondly, and most important, past, current, and even future challenges necessitate investment in people, especially given how technological advances affect jobs. Workers with lower skills usually suffer more than high-skilled ones in terms of adapting industrial revolutions and other similar challenges like those caused by AI and machines replacing most of workers in many different places. COVID-19 is a very close example of such challenges. Most of workers and students have developed some digital skills to be able to adapt the new normal, namely working or learning from home. Otherwise, and because of closure of some of the workplaces, like factories, some workers have suffered job loss. However, those who either have higher levels of learning or skilled enough have managed to adapt and find another job opportunity. Now, moving on to the third and last question, which is, how does my research contribute to the field? I can say that my research concentrates on investing in education as a key component of human capital. Generally, people with more and or better education are more likely to adapt to challenges than those with lower education attainments. I also focus in my research on the fact that education's significance is not just confined to economic outcomes like better jobs, increased productivity, or higher income. Investment in education has indeed many crucial applications other than economic returns. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, human capital investment can also give rise to a wide range of non-economic benefits including greater social cohesion, lower crime, and better health. Furthermore, I study the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs to identify those goals indicating education's importance concerning the non-economic aspects, 
I initially find that investing in education plays a pivotal role in achieving 13 SDGs. The legal aspect of my research's contribution is relating to investigating whether the World Bank Human Capital Project and the SDGs are effective as a kind of soft law in promoting investment in education in both Egypt and the UK. In addition, are these kind of soft laws are effective in bridging all gaps regarding investment in education in both countries? Finally, I'd like to raise three questions to discuss. First, what are the challenges of investing in people or education? Second, do you think investment in education receive enough attention? Third, does law affect investment in education? Thank you very much for watching and listening.